Hey, it's Joel. Next to me is this box. And this box is the Toy Box. It's a 3D printer from Toy Box Labs. The reason I'm opening it up, well, there's actually two reasons. The first one is I did a video not that long ago on this. They ran a successful Indiegogo campaign. I wish them luck. They said, hey, Joel, if you would take our printer in and give it a look, we will donate two printers to your kid's school. I thought that was a really good idea. The second reason, they're appearing on Shark Tank. That's right, Toy Box Labs made it onto Shark Tank. I don't know the results, but uh, this video should be out before Shark Tank airs. So, good luck. Tell Robert Herkovic I said hi. So let's get this box open. Let's see what the retail offering is and let's see if it prints right here on 3D Printing Nerd. Let's waste no time. Haha, <laughs> inside, it does say, Let's begin. Hey, first out of the box, this styrofoam, which we toss lovingly to the floor. Oh, hello. It's kind of like a, a first starting guide. It's like a thing to, to reference when you're just getting started. This is a spool holder. Electron delivery service. That's fun. Oh, that's right. Toy Box calls filament printer food. It's targeted at kids, young people, folks that like to have a good time. So, you know, calling it printer food? I don't see anything wrong with that. Oh, look at that, there it is. A tiny, tiny little printer. Okay, looks like we got everything we need. That's really it. Still has that build plate. That's good, that uh, flexible, flexible build plate. And let's see, the filament they sent is coconut. Of course it would be called food. So there's the coconut filament. Inside this box is, of course, the power supply. See, it's starting to make sense. According to this, it says please visit www.make.toys slash welcome to get started, which I will do on my phone here in just a moment. Oh, look at that. The, uh, the build plate has a little instructional thing on there. It says remove me after printing. Plug goes in the back. Spool holder goes in just like so. It's just like that. It's booting. While it's booting, I'll go get my phone. So now what I do in the app is I connect to the toy box Wi-Fi and then come back to the app and it, uh, it should take care of me. Easy enough. <laughs> Can you see? Can you see it? It's working. Cool. Well now uh, I have to add the printer food into the extruder, I believe. Your toy box is heating up. Don't put your hand in the printing area. Mm, you know, they call it printer food, but the app calls it ink. So, boy, I don't know. Oh, it says ready. It's grabbing the filament. There we go. Looks like they tested it with yellow filament. So, well, now we pick a model. Here we go. Now I'm inside the app. I've got things that I can make, categories, and I've got stuff like that. So I'll go up here. I remember when I did my video and the first thing I did was print a flexible sword. So, or not a flexible sword, a pixelated sword. I'm sorry, pixelated sword. Now it puts up that little countdown there. We might get ourselves a pixelated sword. Minecraft Lego sword is what it's called. There were nothing in the instructions that told me to level the bed or anything. So I'm just gonna let it go. I would imagine it's somewhat pre-calibrated at the factory. It was interesting. I didn't know how far to stick in the printer food, the printer ink the filament, whatever we're gonna call it, but I knew that hitting the button advanced it until I saw stuff coming out. I didn't see anything that said stuff needs to come out. We, uh, we might be getting ourselves a pixelated sword. So setup wasn't too bad. I did have to rely on my own knowledge and not something that they actually explicitly said in the app or in the instructions. I guess that's fine. I mean, they, that's something they can revise or that's something that customer support can tend to. According to my phone, it has one minute and 15 seconds left. It's a pretty quick print. Come on, little printer. Come on, little printer, go. Go, go, go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, end. Close. Okay. Okay, remove me after printing. Look at that. <laughs> Looks like there's some stringiness from the previous filament. You can tell they tested it with yellow. Wow, so 
Detail is there. You can tell that uh, the sword has some edges that are kind of raised up a little bit. Okay, that took like two minutes. That was awesome. Here you can see that this is the, the skirt or whatever. Looks like it might have been a little low digging in right there, but print turned out okay. That's kind of cool. Let's, let's look at this from an outsider's perspective. Let's look at this as not someone who may know a lot about the world of 3D printing, but as someone who's new, as a beginner, as a young person looking to get in, or as a parent or authority figure in a child's life wanting to get something for them. That experience right there, it wasn't perfect, but it was really good. It was really, really good. I thought that this the setup went well. I thought that the instructions were decent. And what was really great is once we hit print, it was fun to watch and it took two minutes. Yes, it's just a teeny tiny little Minecraft sword. It's almost like a little nose picker or whatever, but that's not the point. The point is it went quick and it was fun to watch. So now what we should do is print more things. That's a great idea, Joel. Well, it is later in the day. <laughs> we had to go down uh, south a bit into Tacoma for my son's baseball tournament. Mommy had to stay or had to come back home because she had to do some softball coaching, but both of my daughters were here. Uh, one of my daughters, Riley though, I said, hey Riley, I have this idea. What if you're in charge of the printing on this thing for this video? You have an iPad that you use and I can put the app on there. Why don't you pick some things to print while I'm down at David's baseball tournament and then we'll see how they look. She said, yes. It actually went amazingly well because using the app on my phone, I was able to follow along and see what she was making and the times things were printing, all that sort of stuff. We've got one still going right now, but I made one thing after this little sword and she made three things with a fourth thing printing. So I went into the app and I printed this little pawn and this pawn is uh, a part of a chess set within the app itself. Models in the app, have attribution and how long they take to print. So that's kind of cool because the kid's gonna wanna know. Like this says, it'll take two minutes. I think the pawn took 10 minutes. You can see it's not a perfect print. You can see that there are parts of the print that could look better. It's a good print, it is not a perfect print. We'll come back to that after the rest of these models. As we were leaving, Riley wanted to print this little elephant and uh, the legs were down like that. And these legs, she said, freed up. When I got home, I had to free up these legs right here. And then the elephant could do all of the elephant things that it usually does. It's my terrible impression of an elephant. For what this is, it did a decent job. The ears look, the ears look okay. Uh, I think there was uh, some staircasing here and that's just because of the layer height. And it looks like, looks like the legs could have seen better days. Uh, but the trunk is there. The trunk looks good. You can see right through that eye hole and it's for the most part circular. I think this is a decent print right here. I think that, again, not perfect, but good. Then Riley printed a little flute. Look at that. I think it printed uh, here. Yeah, printed like that. But it's a, I mean, it's a flute. It's a flute. In fact, <laughs> and it works. How cool is that? Remember, this isn't <laughs> this isn't targeted for a 3D printing YouTuber. This isn't targeted for a Railcore user. This is not targeted for someone with 23 different Prusa Mark III's printing Nerf blaster parts out of their, well, once garage. This is targeted to kids to make their own toys. This is a toy and it took no time to make and for the most part, it works. Next was a little Flexi Rex. When I got home, uh, this was freed up. The tail wasn't really free. If you have a print in place model that you're supposed to free up at the end, that's the best thing you can do. It's just kind of shock it a bit and that will free some things up. And look at that. I mean, that is, that is wiggly right there. But the end, uh, the end never freed up, the end tail. And actually, uh, 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 it still won't free up. I'm sure if I applied some science to it and used heat and or blunt objects, it would probably free up. But um, Flexi Rex does flex. These are really good prints and it's targeted to kids to make their own toys. So we're not looking at injection molded perfection. We're looking at good. 
Why don't we sum this all up? Let me put away this camera and why don't I talk to you about what I think this is and what it means. I think that these are good models. I think that these are good prints and I think kids of all ages could have fun with these, including myself. I like what this printer is trying to do. And I believe I said that in my previous video on this. They've come a long way. There are still some stumbling blocks that they need to get over. Uh, for example, the setup process wasn't the easiest. We talked about that. It could be better illustrated or have more information via a website. While I was at my son's baseball tournament, I did get a text. Riley said that all of the models that she had liked in the app, they weren't showing up. So I described to her how to double click the home button on the iPad and swipe up on the app and then click it again or tap it on the screen again to bring it up to restart the app. They showed up, she was able to continue printing. Uh, so stuff like that. They're gonna be on Shark Tank. I have no idea what the outcome of this episode is. I wish them the best of luck. There is a place in this market for a printer that's aimed at kids, that has a curated library of models ready to print, and the library itself gives times on how to print, and loading and unloading the filament is easy, and the build plate is not heated, and it flexes almost like a refrigerator magnet. I like this. I like every part of this. This is not everyone's first printer. This is going to be some people's first printer. This will most likely not be someone's second printer. I hope I'm making sense here. I don't want you to go out and buy this machine just because I say, I think this is a good idea. What I want you to do is do your own research. Go find out about what this was taken from, the CreateBot Super Mini, I believe is what it was. Go find out more about what the company is doing now that probably Shark Tank has aired. Uh, perhaps they've had an influx of money or support or dollars or ways that people can help in the application. I'm not, I'm not afraid to say it. I just, I really like this machine. I like what it stands for. I like what it's doing. And I like that it's going to get more young people into this futuristic 3D printing technology through little elephants, flexi rexes, pawn pieces, Minecraft swords, and beautiful, beautiful music. There's links in the description if you want to get more information about this machine. Go down there, go search. If you like what we do on this show, there are also links in the description that lets you support what we do. Big thanks for everybody that stopped by. Big thanks for everybody that made this far. Beyond all that, don't forget to hug each other more. Love you guys. As always, high five.